Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Movies I Should Have Seen By Now. My name is Bevan Boychuk, and I love movies! Now, of course, as you know, the main focus of this channel is to talk about classic movies I've seen for the first time. But today, we're gonna go a little bit different and talk about movies I saw for the first time, but were brand new in 2015. So allow me to welcome you to my countdown of my top five movies from 2015. Now before I get into the actual countdown of my top five, I want to give two shout outs to honorable mentions for this year. The first one was Focus, and the second one was Sisters. I love both movies for very different reasons, but they just didn't quite make the top five. But coming in at number five, this was a tough decision. My top four was really easy, but number five was very difficult for me. The movie that got beat out for the fifth spot was Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. Now don't get me wrong, Age of Ultron was a great movie, I loved it. I saw it twice in theaters, I watched it recently on Netflix, but it just, it was just missing something. It was missing the magic that the first Avengers movie had. I mean, it was probably my second or third favorite just of Marvel Phase 2 coming behind Captain America Winter Soldier and maybe even Guardians of the Galaxy. But the movie that beat it out was Mockingjay Part 2. And Mockingjay had a bit of an advantage because I watched the whole series on Netflix going up to this movie, so I had the whole story fresh in my mind. Whereas Age of Ultron, yeah, it's a shared universe, but there's no real actual overarching story that connects every single Marvel movie. But I thought Mockingjay Part 2 really had a definitive ending feel to it. And it also, even though it was a Part 2, felt a lot different than Part 1 Mockingjay. It picked up right where the first one left off, but it veered off in a very different direction to give it a different enough of a feel to warrant a part two. Number four on this list is Furious 7. This movie was so over the top ridiculous, it had to be on the list. Like this was a bigger superhero movie than Avengers was. This movie is really on the list for two specific scenes. The first one is where The Rock just flexes out of his cast and just shatters and he throws it off and he goes and he fights bad guys. Rock flexing out of a cast is good enough, but you pair it with a wrench fight between Vin Diesel and Jason Statham? I mean, come on, how is this not in anybody's top five just for these two scenes? Now shift the focus completely from action-packed movies like Mockingjay and Furious 7 to my number three choice, which is Pixar's Inside Out. A lot of people say that Pixar was on a downward slope after Toy Story 3, and I tend to agree, except I really did like Monsters University, but Inside Out was by far the best movie since Toy Story 3 by Pixar. And it's weird how sometimes in these movies that the the main protagonist, which in this case would be Joy, was my least liked character in the entire movie. That spot has to go to Louis Black's anger character, which just really made the movie for me. Well, I mean that and Bing Bong. Bing Bong. Who are you gonna call Bing Bong? Number two on this list was a movie I was very, very excited to go into, but was very low on a lot of people's radar, I feel. And that movie was Jake Gyllenhaal's Southpaw. I said the same thing after I watched Nightcrawler for the first time, but I always forget how good Jake Gyllenhaal actually is as an actor until I see a Jake Gyllenhaal movie. Now if you haven't seen Southpaw, do yourself a favor and go see Southpaw. I mean, there's just so much drama and realness in it. Granted, I haven't seen Creed yet, so I can't say which was the better boxing movie, but this movie just had a lot of it seemed to have a lot more realism than the Rocky series ever did. And I love Rocky, don't get me wrong, I love Rocky. But this movie just felt a bit more real, less underdog, but just more like real gritty, down-to-earth, real shit. And of course, number one has to be Star Wars The Force Awakens. There was no other movie even close to touching this one this year. I mean, just the hype alone was enough to put this movie in my top five. The feeling I had going into the IMAX, standing in line for two hours, even though I already had tickets, was just insane. And it just gives so much anticipation for the next one, episode eight. It introduced brand new characters to this huge 
huge universe that is Star Wars, and it made you care about them. I mean, Rey is now one of my favorite characters in the entire Star Wars universe. I mean, so that's my top five of the year. But what about you? What do you guys think? Comment below your favorite movie of the year that came out in theaters this year. And while you're at it, if you like this video, please, please hit that like button. Also, go check out my last video where I talk about watching Terminator for the very first time. And if you want to see more videos like this and more movie reviews like Terminator from earlier this week, hit that subscribe button because I'm putting out two videos every week. One movie review and one vlog. And don't forget, I'm on Twitter at BevanBoychuk14 and on Instagram at BevanBoychuk. And then tune in on Sunday for the next episode of Movies I Should Have Seen By Now. I'll catch you guys later.